A little which doesn't belong and why. Let's start with veterans placed on the PUP list, Chris, physically unable to perform. Now, that means they were on the active PUP list from the start of camp. You have to make a decision at cutdown day. Do you put them on the active roster or do you put them on the reserve PUP list where they have to miss a minimum of six weeks before they're eligible to return to practice? The three candidates, Michael Thomas of the Saints, David Bakhtiari of the Packers, Stephon Gilmore of the Patriots, which doesn't belong and why? I'm going to go with Stephon Gilmore. Uh, I mean, one, he's, you know... An NFL defensive MVP. Um, he's a, a huge part of that football team. Unlike the other ones with Bakhtiari and Michael Thomas, this is a, a contract issue. To me, this is what it looks like more than anything. I don't know what the injury is, if it's really real or whatever. Um, so I, I just think there's more angles here. Like the other ones are plain and simple. Michael Thomas, yeah, waited too long to get surgery. Bakhtiari, you know, tore his ACL preparing for the NFC Championship game. You know, Gilmore, uh, we, we've heard all those things throughout the offseason and all that, so that's the one that, that doesn't belong to me. Yeah, this is the quietest hold-in that we've seen so right. far this year, and it's actually going to extend six weeks into the regular season because of the injury status. And if it isn't really an injury, both sides are committed to the ruse to the point where they leave him on the pup list for six weeks of the regular did, season. Did, I'll say... Go ahead. I was going to say, did they make a deal where they were like, you know, we, we might not pay you more, so hey, we're gonna just, we, you don't have to play as many games. Here you go. You only have to play 11 games. I know. I, I don't know. It's just, it's it's odd to me, for sure. And, and yeah. I, I'm, I haven't heard anybody that really knows the story throughout the NFL of what's really going on there. Yeah, that's because you're never going to get the full story yeah. as it relates to anything regarding the New England Patriots. I'm going to say Thomas doesn't belong because it just feels like, despite the fact that he and Sean Payton got together and worked out their differences. I think the differences were too deep and profound and had lasted too long for one meeting to solve it. Yeah. I think those two sides are destined for a divorce, whether this year or next year. Next year, a Ju uh, Julio Jones type of trade, June 1, after June 1, is going to be easier to accomplish from a cap standpoint. But it just feels like it's moving in that direction where Thomas is not going to be long for the New Orleans Saints. And I think there's there's more acrimony there than there is between Gilmore and the Patriots. Yeah. All right. Receivers of note who got released. Brashad Perryman by the Lions, Travis Fulgham of the Eagles, and John Brown of the Raiders, which doesn't belong and why. I'm going to go with Travis Fulgham here. Uh, I mean, Travis Fulgham, first off, is like a practice squad journeyman. You know, who I do still think has, like, potential to kind of carve out a niche with a, a team that, you know, is looking for a fourth receiver on their roster. You know, John Brown, you've heard me say, used to drive me crazy last year when everybody was like, oh, all the weapons they got. John Brown, I want to go, there's a reason this is the fourth team in fourth year, four years. It, it's not what it was, it's not the old John Brown, you know. And then, of course, Brashad Berryman has never lived up to expectations that way. Fulgham's got size. We could see, like, when it comes to the game and whatever else, that size comes in handy. He has, he's just got a good feel for football. He doesn't like wow you, uh, but I'll go with him, and I would think somebody picks him up to, to round out their, their receiving core. Yeah, I'll go with the same guy because he actually played for the team that cut him. The other two guys were just signed this year yeah, by the right teams too. that decided it didn't work. They know what Fulgham can do, and he was one of the few bright spots last year. Now, things changed as the year went on. But uh, that one that one surprises me, and that makes it different. And I do think he may have some potential. If he lands in the right spot, and who knows, maybe he, he lands with uh, Carson Wentz in Indianapolis, especially with T.Y. Hilton, Hilton dealing Hilton's with a neck, neck problem injury, that's right. going to knock him out for potentially the whole season. They hope it's not the whole season, but potentially it could be. All right, which doesn't belong and why? Vikings moves. Everson Griffin, cut. Jake Browning, unvaccinated quarterback. Oh, wait, no, he was the one who was vaccinated. Excuse me cut and they traded for tight end Chris Herndon with Irv Smith injured which doesn't belong and why uh I guess I go Everson Griffin here I mean just because there was such a big deal made about you know the signing and you thought maybe uh, hey they know something we don't and maybe he's got a little bit more left in the tank uh you know it's also yeah it's odd that they just signed him and you know yeah he had to deal with the Kirk Cousins apology and all that stuff and then here he is you know a week later he's out the door uh, I think this is probably about the end for Everson Griffin when it when it comes down to it we might not see him again but he had a, a really damn good career well and I'll say this he doesn't belong in my mind because this is possibly a game that's being played by the Vikings to kick the can for a little period of time. Like with Brian Hoyer out in New England, yeah, you need okay. 53 yeah. guys on the roster. Right. You got to put a guy in injured reserve and it may be with Everson Griffin. Now it's not like they're paying him huge money, 
but we hear this every year. Vested veterans cut before week one. That's right. Resigned after week one because after week one, their full salary is not, as a practical matter, guaranteed. That's a reason to do it. Although it seems like every year guys are cut for that reason, and then week one comes and goes, and they never get signed. It's like it's just a way to make them feel better because you're you're – kicking him to the curb oh oh we'll get back to you after week one and yeah. then they just never do but it could be with griffin because he he had a decent game against the chiefs on friday night had a sack had another quarterback hit uh, he's going to be a situational player for the vikings i don't think you go through all that last week if you don't have him in your plans i won't be surprised if he's back all right backup quarterbacks who made the roster which doesn't belong and why cooper rush in dallas josh rosen with the falcons and tyler huntley well, in baltimore well tyler huntley is the one that doesn't belong because i want to go well who the hell who the hell else are they going to have as a backup quarterback i mean you know yeah we could say something about all these guys huntley you know he looks solid in the preseason he's a good athlete you know, he got pretty good control of the football. You see right here. So, I mean, I, there's no other options. McSorley's hurt. He's gone. So, I, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm going to go with Huntley here. I mean, and he continues to show growth at the quarterback position. Pretty damn good play right there to go back, you know, across your body, touchdown pass. So, um, th that did not surprise me at all. When I heard that, oh, yeah, Huntley made the roster. I want to be like, of course he did. Well, Lamar Jackson said himself after that Washington game when he accounted for five touchdowns, I'm glad I don't have to go against this guy. Well, you don't, <laughs> at least for now, because he's your backup. And uh, and look, if you have a quarterback who's going to be running the ball and in harm's way, and credit Lamar Jackson. We've seen it for three years now, and he's yet to have a serious injury other than that incident with cramps on the Monday night last year against mm -hmm. the cramps against the Cleveland Browns. Um but if he does get injured, you need to have somebody who can play. And based on what we saw from Tyler Huntley, he can. I'll say Rosen doesn't belong because he's the top 10 pick. He's the guy. And, and I think that Rosen was attracted to Atlanta because of Arthur Smith, who did what for Ryan Tannehill? Yeah, sure. A failed top 10 pick. Resurrected his career. I'm not going to start drawing comparisons between Josh Rosen and Ryan Tannehill. But Josh Rosen just didn't suddenly forget how to play football. It didn't work in Arizona because they wanted Kyler Murray. It didn't work in Miami. And last year, he just kind of floated around. And you know what? It was a smart move to hitch his wagon to Kyle Shanahan. He didn't know they were going to go out and trade up and get Trey Lance and become irrelevant as far yeah. as Rosen was concerned. So he's got a chance. He's got a chance. You know, I kind of root for this unconventional path where a guy comes in as a top 10 pick. It doesn't work. But through persistence, hard work, determination, he eventually creates an opportunity for himself. That that would be a hell of a story if it happens. It would be. We'll see where it goes. Uh, you know, he he still throws a beautiful football. I mean, for not knowing an offense, he did very well the other night in the Sunday night football game. And, I mean, he's put himself – but, but what I'm getting the point here is, going, man, he's putting himself in a lot of situations. I mean, he was in Tampa and then, you know, in San Francisco, like you said, and now here in Atlanta where, hey, he's he's – you know, I would think going to be right there with Felipe Franks as far as a guy they think about if they got to pull somebody off the bench and Matt Ryan does get hurt. Felipe Franks did well. Uh, I hear what you're saying, Mike. It's, it's going to be interesting to see where where his career goes from here. Yeah, and, uh, you know, in Dallas, uh, look, Garrett Gilbert's gone. Ben DiNucci's gone. Cooper Rush is there. And it very well could be that last year they had Andy Dalton and they needed him and they still went 6-10 and 10 and they've just decided just to hell with it. The hell with it. Yeah. We're going to go all in with Dak Prescott. If it doesn't work, it doesn't matter who plays quarterback. We are screwed anyway. Sorry, London. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.